My name is Ivan Damko. I'm a chief cryptographer and co-founder of Patricia Blockchain, and I'm also a professor in computer science at Aarhus University. So first and foremost, I'm a cryptographer and I'm an expert in, in secure multi-party computation. And actually, I was one of the founders of this field back in, in the late 80s, where we started doing uh, multi-party computation at a point when nobody knew that this was possible at all. We were the first people who showed it can actually be done. Um, and back in the day, one has to remember that this is way back when, when the internet barely existed, that, that we did this. Um, back then, it was only a theoretical endeavor. If you had asked me back then, uh, me and everyone else would have said, this is fantastic in theory, but actually, uh, we'll never fly in practice because it's way too inefficient. But then, of course, over time, things happened and we also invented new solutions, and it turns out that the thing is completely useful and practical after all. So the background for creating Partition in the first place was that we did, back in 2007-8, we did the world's first commercial application of MPC, of multi-party computation, and this convinced us of the commercial potential in MPC was quite a breakthrough. So we started Partition based on that. This was, in the first place, only to, to uh, mature MPC for commercial applications. And then, much later, we, we figured out uh, all of the amazing potential that there is in blockchain and combining these things. So, so that's why we then later founded Patricia Blockchain. So what is multi-party computation? Well, I guess one can begin by thinking about the fact that, as we all know, we can send data on the internet securely via a secure connection from A to B. And what that means is you're sending encrypted data. And, and of course, uh, that means that anybody who looks at this will not understand anything, they'll just see gibberish. Um, but the fact is, you can do much more with encrypted data than just sending it from A to B. You can also compute an encrypted data. And what that means is, is, is that you get some result in encrypted form. Uh, I can maybe make it more concrete. Uh, let, let's say we have a bunch of people who work in the same sector and we want to find out what is our average salary. Probably nobody wants to just reveal to everyone else what, for privacy reasons what, what is my salary. So the way you'd handle this with NPC is everybody supplies in encrypted form their salary and now collectively we work on these encryptions to get a new form of gibberish, which actually turns out if you do it just right to be the encryption of the average salary. And now it's set up so that if we collaborate, we can decrypt that. So now we all learn the average salary. But because everybody has to agree on what we decrypt, then you actually retain control over your own data that you put into the computation in the first place. So th the reason why blockchain is super important for MPC and vice versa is because if you think about MPC being used in, in, um, in a bigger landscape, so where lots of different people might be interested in, in, in supplying their data into a computation and lots of people might be interested in, in supplying their computing power to help do secure computation, you need coordination. You have to make sure that, that uh, so we're about to do this computation on very sensitive data, do we actually have the input? Are we ready? And after we, we do, do we all agree that this, that this went well? So it's actually secure to open the result. So all this coordination is needed. Uh, and this just this doesn't come by itself. You need actually to uh, to coordinate these things. And the blockchain is a perfect vehicle for doing exactly that. So what distinguishes Patricia blockchain is that it's designed to be a vehicle for secure computation for for, for MPC and zero knowledge computation. Um, and what this allows you to do again. So MPC is special in that you can enter your data into some system. Um, that will compute some results that, that, that you want to see, but in such a way that you retain complete control over your data. The data that people would otherwise have to put on blockchain and sort of hope that you, that you have privacy if other people behave well, uh, this is not the case anymore because with, with uh, secure computation, you retain control. So one concrete use case where, where this might be interesting is uh, say you run a company in some sector uh, and then what, what many companies are interested in is how, how does my business compare to other people in the same line of business? So in, in terms of production costs, uh, salaries, uh, productivity, whatever. Um, so that's typically something everybody's interested in, but of course it's also a service that nobody wants to deliver data to because of course the people you're comparing yourself to uh, are sadly also your competitors. So you definitely don't want them to learn your private data in such a case. Um, so so multi-party computation on the blockchain allows you to create sort of um, in a seamless way a system where you can everybody can input 
their performance data into the system, do an analysis that will then output to you and only to you how you compare to the general uh, you know, performance in, in, in this business. And this way everybody benefits without having a single point of trust, a single point of attack where all the data is collected. Of course, we all know that, especially in Europe, uh, it's very limited what you can do with, with personal data. Um, but as long as, as, they are, as they are encrypted, as long as they're hidden, you, you can do much more. So that means with, with such a system as, as, as we're building, you can actually, as a private person, donate your data to science and have it be used for the greater good without risking your privacy. And I think uh, in the future, we'll see more of this. We'll also see much more of so-called um, secure benchmarking. This is what we talked about before, that, 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 that you compare yourself in some sense to what other people in the same line of business are doing. So I guess what excites me the most about what, what's been happening in recent years is, is this enormous um, um, spread of knowledge about multi-party computation and how it combines with blockchain. Because um, let's be honest, when we founded Patricia back in 2008, maybe the world wasn't quite ready for multi-party computation because uh, you have to understand, enough people have to understand what this technology is, what it can do for you. Um, and I think uh, this finally happened over the last few years when kind of the, um, uh, the blockchain uh, development sort of caught people's attention to security also. We have the best expertise that, that is around, both in cryptography and in the blockchain technology. We do things open source, we peer review everything. So, so in terms of the, the standard quality control, so to speak, and also in scientific background, I think we're doing really well. So one distinguishing feature of Batisia blockchain is again that it's based on, on secure computation. What that means is that if you're putting your confidential data into the system, it can be set up so that either you or someone you trust uh, retain control over that data. So what that means is, is that even if some other participant in the system get hacked and get everything stolen, uh, your data will not be stolen. So what is really inspiring about the community that, that's building up very rapidly around Patricia blockchain is that uh, it seems to be a very imaginative and creative bunch of people that, that constantly seem to be coming up with ideas for how to use this. So I'm excited about it. quite a few things. One thing is, is that we have this, this, this very active and, and, and blossoming cryptography research group at the university. That's one thing that we're very successful in research and also you know, successful socially and inspiring me. Is other. But also, it, it's very satisfying to see that then when these people get done, when, when, when people get their PhDs, that then they go out in society and, and do great things. Uh, some in academia, but also some here in Aarhus in Patricia.